very special guest joining us, Jackie. Yes, we have a doctor, a neurologist from Broadlands this Correct. morning. Good yes. morning. Good Dr. morning. Dr. Wendy Happy Zeta here. is here joining us. And uh, explain uh, your specialty over at Broadlands because as sure. we've learned here over the past several weeks, Broadlands really is an amazing place. It is an amazing place. My specialty is super amazing. It's neurology. So we deal with the brain, which includes a lot of things. Um, it includes epilepsy, migraine, MS, stroke, really anything that involves the brain and the peripheral nervous system is neurology. And you've zeroed in, especially on, for example, epilepsy, some really neat things that you can do. Right, yeah, my, my fellowship is epilepsy, so that's sort of my first love. And um, we treat a lot of patients with epilepsy at Broadlands. We offer all sorts of medications, and I've also uh, brought a prop here. Uh, so, uh, this is a treatment for epilepsy called the vagal nerve stimulator. I'm glad you said that. I was going to call it the Vegas. Vegas. Well, that, that works too. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it, it's called what, the VNS. VNS. The okay. VNS that therapy. would be an appropriate okay. acronym for it. And, yeah. and epilepsy. When you think of epilepsy, you think of seizures. That's not always the case, right, with epilepsy, but. Well, yeah, epilepsy by definition is repeated unprovoked seizures. Mm -hmm. So a seizure disorder is epilepsy. I think the the term epilepsy is a little more scary than the term seizure disorder, but for somebody who has more than one seizure, it, it counts as epilepsy. And this is like a thunderstorm amongst your, your yeah, brain cells. like an electrical storm of the right. brain is sometimes how we talk about it. And fortunately, about 60% of people will respond to the first medication and then they can become seizure free. Really? Yeah. But about 40% have a more refractory type of epilepsy, and that means that they don't necessarily respond well to the first medication or the second medication. And then we try to be a little more creative in terms of how we can treat them. So, for example, one of the options that I brought today is something called a vagal nerve stimulator, which my, my patients like. And this has been an FDA-approved therapy since 1997. And what it is is um, it's kind of like we call it a pacemaker for, for epilepsy. So there's a device that's implanted underneath the skin. It's that big? Yep, it comes in different sizes, okay. but this is a more common size because it has a higher battery life. Sure. It's implanted underneath the skin with wires that an ENT doctor connects to the vagus nerve, okay. which is a nerve yeah. in our brain stem, among other things that affects our voice, for example. But um, and for reasons that are not entirely known, when this nerve is stimulated periodically, it tends to sort of interrupt seizures. So hmm. once it's implanted, we have a, basically a programming device where we can adjust the parameters in terms of how often it goes off, the strength of the, um, uh, the uh, how intense the stimulation is. And for many people, this really helps epilepsy. How so you don't have you to crack them open and actually physically go in and adjust so something. That, that is the adjustment tool. Right, yeah. Crack open sounds so, so I know. vile. Yeah, it's, it's I actually, tend to paint things in a flowery fashion. But how often would you have to have treatments like that? Does it depend on each case? or? Well, once it's implanted, and it's, it's really an in and out procedure. Uh, we have an ENT, Dr. Matt Brown, who does it mm -hmm. at Broadlands. Um, you know, you can sort of feel it a little underneath the skin like a pacemaker. Then they come into the office and then I use the programming device to set the parameters. The wand communicates with the device. Really? And we adjust the parameters to try to get the optimum control, basically. So you're setting like a computer chip like people have wow. the brain boxes in their cars to, to make sure it does the right things. Exactly. But you don't have to surgically go in and change it. You know, it, it is a battery, so the 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 lifetime of the battery can vary from four years to ten years depending on how high the settings are. But, mm -hmm. but the settings themselves you can change throughout I, the, with a wireless device. That's right. I adjust it in the office. That's yeah. so neat. So it's kind of cool. And yeah. you said this has been around for a while but I suppose with the update of tablets and things like that it makes it even more convenient. Yeah and actually they just came out with a newer device that we know that in about 85% of people with epilepsy, their heart rate will spike before a seizure. So now hmm. there's an EKG strip in the device so that if there's a peak in their heart rate, the device will go off automatically in hopes of aborting the seizure. Wow. So that's a new technology that's just uh, 
four months old at this point, so we're excited about that. You were talking before the segment as well about the, some of the things you do with migraines, and I guess before we get started there, uh, I don't know if a lot of people, including me, have, have a good idea of what a migraine is. We think of it as an intense headache, I guess, but... Yeah, that's a fair uh, uh, description. A migraine is basically a severe headache. Mm -hmm. Often it's unilateral. Often there is nausea or vomiting with it and often it's severe enough that a person will miss work or school. So if a person has migraines, we try, first we try like a rescue therapy, but if they're frequent enough, we try a preventive therapy. So it's kind of a two-tier approach. And then a newer therapy approved since 2009 is Botox. And I think when it came out, we were all a little skeptical, but the sort of, the story behind Botox is women were getting it cosmetically and coming back to their doctors and saying, hey, my headaches are gone. Huh. And so the company started really? to do trials and it, uh, they were overwhelmingly positive. And my, my personal experience has been very positive. We've been doing it for four years at Broadlawns. And it's kind of nice because when you take medications, you have side effects of medications. And Botox is just, you know, we inject it here, here, back here and here. It's not systemically absorbed. Right. And so, you know, you don't get sluggishness or drowsiness or other things that can occur with medications. Do we know what, it, what it's doing to eliminate these migraine headaches? You know, we don't exactly know. Yeah. And which that's often the case with medicine, isn't it? We sort of, we try something, we mm. prove that it's safe, we prove that it's effective, and then we kind of scratch our heads and go, I wonder why this worked. <laughs> but. But it does. We're glad that something does work. Oh, now, yeah. you guys have a convention coming up in November? We do. I have a, I'm, I'll be speaking at our um, Iowa Epilepsy Smart Conference, which is supported by the Epilepsy Foundation of Iowa and Illinois. And I'll be a, a keynote speaker this year. So I'll be talking about treatments for epilepsy. So we'll talk about some of the new medications. We'll talk about the VNS. We'll talk about a hot topic of interest, which is marijuana for epilepsy, which is being studied in phase one trials. So and, what are they thinking? well, it's phase one. So, yeah. you know, you got to get to phase four, but, um, but now there's some pharmaceutical companies that are really investing some money in it because it shows some promise, so we'll see. Mm. But it's amazing what Broadlines has done recently. The, the improvement you guys have over at your facility is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just well supported as physicians, and I think one thing that's been nice that I've noticed about Broadlands, it's kind of a smaller scale hospital, so the physicians have a voice, and I think you know, people are really aching for more of a personalized approach. Yeah. And it's the kind of place where something comes up with a patient that, let's say, involves their eye. I can walk down the hall mm -hmm. and talk to the eye doctor That's and nice. maybe even get them in that day. So, I mean, I think that kind of personalized attention is something that people are really yearning for, and, and, and we offer that. Well, thank you, doctor, for coming in yeah, this morning so and showing much. off thank these you. tools. My Appreciate pleasure. Thanks for having me.